हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर शाजे हुसैन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ होम साइंस पटना वेमेंस कॉलेज इन दिस लेक्चर यू विल स्टडी थर्मल प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ फूड एट द एंड ऑफ दिस लेक्चर यू विल लर्न अबाउट व्हाट थर्मल प्रोसेसिंग इज व्हाई फूड इज हीटेड एंड द वेरियस टेक्निक्स यूज इन थर्मल प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ फूड सो वॉट इज थर्मल प्रोसेसिंग द प्रोसेसिंग दैट इन्वॉल्व हीटिंग फूड either in a sealed container or by passing it through a heat exchanger followed by packaging it is important to ensure that the food is adequately heat treated to reduce post processing contamination the food should then be cooled quickly and it may require refrigerated storage or be stable at ambient temperature the heating process can be either batch or continuous so here are some of the reasons for heating foods the main one being to inactivate pathogenic or spoilage microorganisms it may also be important to inactivate enzymes to avoid the browning of fruit by polyphenol oxidases and minimize flavor changes resulting from lipase and proteolytic activity the process of heating a food also includes physical changes and chemical reactions such as starch gelatinization protein denaturation or browning which in turn affect the sensory characteristics such as color flavor and texture basically there are three types of thermal processing first is blanching second is pasteurization and third is sterilization i will give you a brief description of all the thermal processing method Blanching is a mild heat treatment indirectly given to most fresh foods basically given to fruits and vegetables by boiling water or steam and it is not a complete preservation technique it removes a part of air from the tissues improve their color and lower the number of microbes present in food still the most important function of treatment is in activating the enzymes This heat treatment is mostly given as pre-treatment or post-treatment during food processing. It is used along with canning, freezing and dehydration. Well, blanching is useful and its functions include reducing surface microbial contamination of the food, softening of vegetable tissues to facilitate filling into containers and removing air from intercellular spaces prior to canning. Generally time temperature combination in blanching vary from 1 to 15 minutes at 70 to 100 degree celsius over blanching causes fall in texture color and flavor qualities whereas under blanching increases degradation rate blanching is classified into two types first one is hot water blanching and second is steam blanching hot water blanching is a traditional method of blanching food We use hot water blanching in our home kitchen. In industry, hot water blanchers are used that hold the food in hot water for a specified time, then moves it to a dewatering or cooling section. Next is steam blanchers. This is the preferred method for foods with large cut surface areas as lower leaching losses. In case of steam blanching, the food product is directly exposed to steam in place of using water as a medium for blanching which avoids the loss of food soluble solids like flavors vitamins acids sugars etc to blanching medium as well as solves the problem of disposing blanching medium after processing normally food material carried on a mesh belt or rotatory cylinder through a steam atmosphere residence time controlled by speed of the conveyor or rotation let us find out which types of foods are subjected to blanching so as you can see blanching is used in foods like tomato spinach beans carrots peas asparagus broccoli corn apple and pear you must be aware of the various pasteurized products available in the market the most commonly used product being milk let us know what is the pasteurization process it is the process of heating the product to a predetermined temperature 
and holding it until all or nearly all objectionable microorganism which may be present are killed this process was developed by louis pasteur in 1960 there are some of the objectives of pasteurization first to make the product safe for human consumption by destroying the pathogenic organism which may be present second it improves preservation quality by destroying almost all spoilage organism third it helps to retain good flavor over a long period of time there are number of basic methods of pasteurization widely used in the industry first one is batch method which is also known as holding method in this method every particle of food basically milk must be heated to at least 63 degree celsius and held for at least 30 minutes however this is not used commercially these days another method is high temperature short time in this method the heating of every particle of food basically milk to at least 30 to 72 degree celsius and holding for at least 15 seconds and it is carried out as a continuous process third method of pasteurization process is ultra high temperature system this method results in a complete pasteurization of milk in this system milk is held for 3 seconds at 93.4 degree celsius or 1 second at 149.5 degree celsius this system is also used extensively for the treatment of milk or cream in dairy industries let us find out more about the products that are pasteurized besides milk so as you can see pasteurization is also used in foods like fruit juices jam sauces and syrups some liquid foods are pasteurized after filling into containers hot water is normally used if the food is packaged into glasses to reduce the risk of breakage due to thermal shock metal and plastic containers may be pasteurized using steam air mixtures or hot water next is sterilization it is a controlled heating process used to completely eliminate all living microorganism including thermo resistant spores in food it is the most extreme heat treatment given in preservation of food by heat usually target organism is a heat resistant pathogenic microorganism most often a spore forming rather than a vegetative one sterilization can be achieved by moist heat dry heat and irradiation the aim of sterilization is the destruction of all bacteria including their spores now coming to the process of sterilization this process is used in the canned product and are divided into three phases phase 1 is heating which is done by means of a heating medium either water or steam and the product temperature is increased from ambient to the required sterilization temperature this temperature is maintained for a defined time in phase 2 which is a holding phase in phase 3 that is the cooling phase the temperature in the can is decreased by introduction of cold water into the autoclave let us learn a more about the food product categories that undergo sterilization so as you can see sterilization is used in foods like vegetables and fruits puree some varieties of fishes like tuna and salmon canned fruit slices milk and milk products like paneer and cream so in this lecture you learned about thermal processing and different thermal treatments used in food preparation it also ensures the food safety i hope you found this lecture informative thank you